How's it going everybody? Welcome back. We're here for another video. Thank you very much for joining us today. <laughs> It really means a lot to me. Here we go, we're going to do something that I've not done in a little while. Let's talk about an individual film, but not only that, let's talk about an individual film experience that I've had, right, today, on this very day. Bucket list material right here, ladies and gents. It's just going to put it out there, bucket list. And no, I don't mean the 100 movies bucket list challenge, series thing I was doing before. Um, it's kind of put on hold just now. It's kind of been put to the side. I've not really been having the best time with it. Or, you know, in all honesty, which is strange, watching classic films and talking about them. Just the whole concept of it and the whole idea that I've had isn't particularly working the way I was wanting it to do. So maybe it's something to look into to maybe add to the podcast if we ever get around to doing another podcast. Um, everybody's busy at the minute. But anyway, uh, talking about bucket list things, bucket list movies, bucket list experiences. Today I had the pleasure of seeing this absolute classic on the big screen at the cinema. Yes, this is Jaws. I've said before on this channel, on my podcast, in my personal life, on fucking, where else have I said it? Just in life. That Jaws is one of my favourite films of all time and arguably, in my opinion, the best film ever made. Now, does that opinion still hold up after seeing it in a cinema-like environment? Absolutely, ladies and gents. I had the best time today. It's an absolutely scorching sunny day, right, here in the middle of July in Glasgow, which is rare here in, here in this country. We don't get the greatest summers. Every summer we have maybe two weeks worth, if that, of really, really, really nice summer weather. And other sort of nice days are spread out across the year. Some you get in October, some you get in April sort of thing. But summertime, if you call it, you know, late May to sort of mid-August, we don't have that much great weather. Um, but today was one of those days. Today was an absolute sculpture. It was roasting. We had the barbecue for dinner. But um, we had booked to go see Jaws in the cinema. So I spent two hours and four minutes of that lovely day sitting in a cinema screen. It was packed. It was roasting. And I don't regret any minute of it because it was brilliant. It was so much fun. I've seen, you know, some classic films in the cinema recently. I saw 2001 A Space Odyssey about a year ago. I saw Escape from New York in the cinema. And I also saw uh, A Clockwork Orange this year, which was part of the Bucket List series video um, series. And it was also great because all those films I'd never seen before, they're classic films that I'd never seen before. So the first time that I'd seen them was in the cinema and in my opinion you know you can watch a film on your phone in your bed with earphones and it, you know it's great you can watch it in your house you know with your great sound your sound bar if you have one you can watch them on sky you can watch them on netflix online but in my opinion you know movies were made to be seen on the big screen they were they were made to be seen in a, in a cinema like environment when the lights are all down you're in a comfy seat you are 100 percent engrossed in what you're seeing the great sound around you, the surround sound, the big screen, nothing else in the world matters for the next two hours. You know, the only thing in your life is this film. That's how films are made. Um, that's how films, when, when people are putting together films and writing films, that's how first impressions are everything, right? So that's the first time someone's going to see something. It needs to mean the most. So in my opinion, if you're going to see a film, you need to see it in the cinema. Um, so if you get any opportunity to see a classic film that you've never seen before, like 2001 A Space Odyssey, like I did, or A Clockwork Orange, or something like that. That's the way to do it, you know? And I love those films, and I think I loved them because of that. And I don't think I would have enjoyed the films as much if I'd watched them here, if I'd watched them in my office, as I'm starting to call this room. But there's, there's exceptions, but what I'm trying to say is seeing a film in the cinema is the absolute, complete experience. There's nothing quite like it. There's nothing better than seeing a film. Just like, you know, listening to a good song, you need good audio, you know? Just like watching a favourite TV show, you need to be in the right mind frame. Just like going to see a play, you need to be in the right theatre and in the right seat, that sort of thing, right? So I'm very fussy that way. When I say bucket list material, I'm absolutely telling the truth because because these other films have been out in cinema, I've always been like, I'd love to see, you know, my favourite films in that big screen pictures-like environment. And I always said the one I said, the one I want them to show in the cinema is Jaws. And my God, today we managed to do it. It was great. Me and my dad went. Me and my dad have always held Jaws as like a... Not, a, not, not a, like a bonding sort of thing, but like, we've always both loved the film, we've always watched the film together and quoted the film all the time. He's the one that showed me, it's one of his favourite films when he was growing up, and uh, obviously it came out in 1975, but even then he didn't get to see it in the cinema either. We always talked about how we'd love to see it in the cinema. And the opportunity came up, there was one seat remaining when I went to book it a couple of weeks ago. 
one seat remaining. It was so busy, which I loved the fact that you know, it's, it's busy. So I booked it for myself very selfishly. I thought it's a bucket list thing for me. I have to go. But then I kept checking and they put on a second showing. So I booked one for me and my dad to go see together. Um, which was like 15 minutes after the other one and it was packed it wasn't sold out but it was packed so it just shows you that there's there's a there's um interest in these things there's interest in classic films being put back in cinemas because people want to experience it and i was thinking as well who's going to be in that cinema it's people like me who love the film who have seen the film loads and loads of times who want to see it in that environment or it could be people that have never seen the film before just like me seeing 2001 or just like me seeing escape from new york and it was just so weird being in that cinema surrounded by people. I'm thinking, these people are either like me or these are people who have never seen Jaws and they're about to experience Jaws for the first time. That being said as well, the cinema was filled with different types of people and it made me so happy. It was ridiculous. There was older people there. There was couples there. There were fucking kids there. And when I say kids, I mean like, I'm talking like five-year-old, five to six-year-old. By, by the way, I don't know if you can notice here, but the film is now rated a 12. This film came out in 1975 and it was rated an 18. And although I don't think it's maybe an 18 and although maybe I don't think it's a 12, um, I would say 15 is probably the correct rating because there's some really brutal moments. There's still some really scary moments. There's some bad language and that sort of thing. But, but anyway, it's a different time, isn't it, 2019? It's so much different than 1975. But anyway, I was saying about how the different types of people. In the row me and my dad were sitting on, there was two girls to the side of us who were maybe a bit younger than me, maybe 16, 17 year olds, and they were like talking about the film as well, I could kind of hear them. And it's like, these are two girls that have just decided to go see Jaws. And I don't know if it's like, they've been recommended that by their parents or whatever, or they've just decided to go see it. You know what I mean? And I, I, I was blown away. I was like, oh my God, that's so random. In terms of the film itself, I've seen the film so many times, but that being said, as I was kind of talking about, it's a different experience seeing it in the film, in, in, in the cinema. I, if I was going to guess, right, I know I kind of exaggerate things a lot here in my life and stuff, and I've, I've said before, I've seen Jaws hundreds of times. If I was to honestly guess how many times I've watched that film, from start to finish, we're in the double, we're in the double figures, but in terms of like, you know, watching certain scenes or listening to the theme song or watching certain moments, I'm honestly going to say we're in the 50s around then, right? I'm just genuinely one of my favourite films. I've watched it since I was a wee boy. And I think when you're sitting watching a film like Jaws and you know what's happening, you know what's coming, you kind of tune out of certain scenes and stuff and, and the dialogue just kind of, you can look on your phone or whatever. Um, so watching it in this environment was really, really nice because there were certain things I was picking up on that I didn't realise before or didn't pick up on before. And especially the dialogue, because obviously older films, dated films, sometimes the audio is a bit daft. Lots of it is dubbed, you know, and it's dated. And what I will say as well, when you see films from the 70s, a lot of them are dated, right? They don't hold up. But Jaws, although it came out in 1975, isn't that bad in terms of being dated. Like, not at all. Like, it's you can tell it's an older film, you know, but it's not like, whoa, this is, I can't even watch. It's not unwatchable. We think that the kind of the locals of... The Amity Island we're talking about earlier in the film, I picked up on more here. I was able to listen to Quint more because I always found him really hard to understand. The only time I've ever sat down and listened to Quint talking is that monologue he does in the boat when he talks about the Indianapolis, um, which is a true story and it's like improv as well. He just kind of tells his tale of it. And by the way, that scene in the cinema environment, amazing. And, and talking about like iconic scenes and stuff, they really held up and they really came, you know, more impactful than ever before in the cinema, like the we're going to need a bigger boat scene, like the first time the shark kills somebody, like when um, when the wee boy is wearing the plastic fin and the, the, the sea, the water is evacuated and there's all this panic and it's just this wee guy and they're all about to shoot him and they all go, oh, panic, it's a panic over, you know, it's, there's, there's some jokesters on the island, that sort of thing. And while that's all happening, the actual shark's in the pond killing this old man right beside Brody's kid, you know. These iconic movie moments, the music as well, I can't describe to you. And being in the cinema for that, you know what I mean? I talk about going to see Bohemian Rhapsody in the cinema was the best decision ever because you had that audio. A Star Is Born, there's another one. The brand new film yesterday about the Beatles needs to be seen in the cinema to hear that music. You know what I mean? 2000 on a Space Odyssey and The Clockwork Orange, two iconic theme songs made even better in the cinema. You want to talk about iconic theme songs? Jaws may be the most iconic ever. And the music in this film... You know, it just, and this experience just stood out even more, like the wee notes, like the da 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 like wee bits like that, just like give you goosebumps, you know what I mean? The guys are giving me goosebumps thinking about it right now. 
Moments like Quint standing right on the edge of the boat with his gun, just kind of all happy and stuff with that amazing sunset background in the background. That's it. That's like, that's movie gold, absolute beauty on the screen. That's why we're here for moments like that. The, the scariest moments like Quint, you know, spoiler, Quint being eaten by the shark is so brutal. That's why I'm saying that like five-year-old kids, we girls in the feckin' cinema, shouldn't have been seeing that. And then of course the iconic scary moment is when Hooper is underneath, you know, underneath the boat looking at the abandoned ship from the, the fisherman. And he sees the fisherman's head roll out of the boat. And, you know, I was preparing myself for it. I always knew it was the jump scare. You know, I always knew it was the iconic scary moment in the film. I was kind of tensing. I was preparing myself for it because I've seen it so many times. However, for some reason, I forgot they added this mad sound effect and they added like a scream. Uh, and that pure caught me off guard. Like I just totally forgot about the screen and I jumped about six feet in the air again. Always gets me every time. So that was great in the cinema as well, being scared like that. Um, I mean, Martin Brody, uh, Hooper, what's his name? I can't remember his first name. Hooper, and then we've got Quint. Like three amazing performances, three iconic characters. Their relationship is so good. I always said this when like, if someone would give me a hard time for liking this film so much, I would always say, just imagine three people who you don't get on with, but you kind of respect. You're stuck on a fucking boat and a 25 foot shark is surrounding you, trying to kill you. It's just great. I know I'm, I'm going to forget stuff here and it's going to really annoy me in post-production. But um, that was my experience at the cinema today. Beautiful summer's day, watching one of my favourite films. And on a, on a different day, I may call it my favourite film of all time. I put this up there with Star Wars, by the way, original Star Wars, Cine World, if you're listening, original Star Wars, next please, that or Back to the Future. I tweeted that, you know, me and my dad were in the cinema and it was a bucket list moment. Cine World, you know, the official Twitter replied to me and said, wait, we hope you enjoyed. And I just replied to them, we did more classic films, please, Back to the Future next. Can you imagine Back to the Future in the feckin' cinema? It'd be brilliant. Uh, yeah, so George, Star Wars, I put Rush Hour up there. By the way, the past two weeks, Rush Hour 2, it's just randomly been on ITV4, and I've watched it both weeks. <laughs> Amazing film. And it was, I think it's the weakest one of the trilogy. Brilliant. Uh, I also put Airplane up there as my favourite film, and Home Alone 1 and 2. So, you know, on any day, any of those five films could be my number one. And I've said Jaws as my favourite loads of times. It's the best film ever made in terms of wee things like shots of the water in the background, still be intense. I'm sitting there in the cinema, seeing this film loads and loads of times, still tense, still anxious watching this film. And that's that is filmmaking at its finest. It's just so good, man. So yeah, there you go. Jaws in the cinema is a massive thumbs up. And if you have any films in particular that you'd love to see in the cinema, please keep an eye out for them because I can't recommend the experience enough. It's like a bonding moment with your family if you have fun memories and moments from those films. It's like, a, like another moment, another story, memory of that film, another reason you love it so much. I can now say for the rest of my life, Jaws is one of my favourite films of all time. I grew up watching it in, with my dad and we got to see it in the cinema. Ridiculous, mind blowing and, uh, and bucket list material right there. So yes, thank you very much everybody for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed and I'll see you all in the next video. You can follow me by the way on that pre-noted Twitter at CM42TV. So please take care of yourselves. Go watch some classic films. Go support cinemas in general and go check out Jaws because it might be the best film ever made. Thanks for watching. Cheers.